Man, that one's just fighting me. Welcome back to the Lost Cause Ranch. Today, we're back on the Range Rover Camper. Got a little issue. We got no oil pressure. And my understanding is, it needs that. So, we're gonna tear into it today and start figuring out what's going on. So during the mess of selling the commercial shop and shutting the business down, we uh, parked this guy for a little bit. And when we went to move everything out, of the shop fire this guy up oil pressure light man that stinks but it's only got a few thousand miles on a fresh four six so figured it was probably sensor or something but just to make sure we hooked up a mechanical gauge and turns out didn't actually have oil pressure so i ended up towing it back to the ranch here but first i gotta clean up my woodworking mess since we're kind of building the shop but we'll check in on that guy later in the video she picks the most interesting places to lay around here Tiny one. Surprisingly, I've been here for five years and this is actually the first snake I've seen on the property. Not a big snake expert, but I think that's just a little milk snake. Harmless. When I bought this place, I thought I'd be seeing snakes all the time with all the limestone. I see them out trail running in other parts around here, but never actually at the ranch. That's kind of cool. Sasha likes catching mice, so maybe she'll start catching some snakes. And there it goes. All right, so just got back from running. We got our VR1 oil. More lags for the building. Doesn't seem like I've bought enough of those yet. And we also grabbed a filter. So we've done enough of these where they've broken oil pump gears and whatnot. And then there's been some O-rings and sludge on other ones. But this guy has like, I think if I remember correctly, 8,000 miles on this engine. So you wouldn't think it'd be sludged up. You wouldn't think it'd be a gear at that point. Although that is always a possibility with these. But I want to give something a shot first. It might be throwing some oil away, but I'm going to dump the oil, change the filter out. The oil doesn't have a ton of miles on it per se, but it has a fair amount of time. And then this thing was parked for like six months without running. The old 3.5 V8s had problems with priming the oil pump. Newer ones, not so much, but I'm going to go with a leading theory that maybe it lost its prime and I didn't really let it run that long. So we're gonna get some known thicker oil in it. I'm not sure what's in there at the moment. We'll have some 2050 VR1 with a decent zinc content. At least decent compared to what else you can get off the shelf these days. And a fresh filter and we'll try and get this thing primed. See if that takes care of our issue. Fingers crossed. Otherwise pan comes off but we'll attempt to save some time before we go after pulling the front cover off. It's not terrible especially this one's got a lift so you have plenty of room underneath to drop the pan and everything. I just I just don't want to. So we're gonna borrow Sasha's shop pillow. I don't think she's too happy about it but I don't feel like laying on the gravel and don't have anything else. Sasha, thanks for the help. You want me to move you up top so we can pour the oil in together? She is quite the character. She's always got a little FOMO. We can't miss out on anything, can we? Looks like we had a little critter in here. Hopefully that's as far as he made it. So we 
we got fuel pump fuse there, marked in yellow already. I'm gonna pull that guy. I'm, yep, gonna pull it. Now we're gonna hang on to that. Did that so it doesn't fire up and we can just crank on it for a bit and we'll see if we build any oil pressure, hopefully. We won't do it too long because we don't want to do any damage. But either way, we gotta find out if it worked. Pop that guy back in. Maybe. Oh, that one's just fighting me. All right, here goes nothing. I guess it was worth a shot, but that's a negative. And it did not suck any down. So we obviously have something bigger going on than just that. It was a long shot, but um, we will be pulling the front cover off this thing. Before that, let's check in quick on the building. Have the overhangs boxed out on the two long sides. The lift has been tremendously valuable in getting all that stuff done. Because as it turns out, I am five foot six, not 16 foot six. I just couldn't quite reach it without it. Also got our little diagonal knee braces in at the top of the wall on both sides. Sasha's checking out what we are down to on the lumber. And this is it. After this is gone, all of the wood is up. And the skeleton, I guess you would call it. Look, it's sunny is complete. Well, these guys right there are the corner braces. Got some that run there and there on each corner. And then we have some wind braces that run along the top purlins. So those will get zipped in along there. I think there might be a lateral brace that goes on the bottom of the trusses too, but I'm not sure. I'll have to look at the blueprints for that. After that's done, it's just steel. Pour some concrete, insulate some stuff, electrical, whatever. But we are, we are getting there. Steel should show up in two or three days, hopefully, as long as they don't delay it once more. Oh, I have that one to put up too. So we are gonna be pulling the front cover off the old helmet to see what's going on. I'm putting my money on a split gear. Just seems to be the most common thing we've ran into personally on the Rover V8. But let me know down below what you think and I'll pick one of the correct guesses and send out a hat or a shirt or something just to keep it fun. So let me know down below what you guys think is causing the no oil pressure situation on the camper. But the front cover will come off in the next video. We're gonna keep this one short. As always, appreciate you guys watching and we will catch you on the next one. Sush. It's gonna be a good day when we, when we can get back to working on these guys. Undercover. Undercover as in rough, not like the FBI.